Hey, what's up YouTube? It is Captain Shock here. Today I'm bringing you a subscriber gameplay analysis video and today's subscriber is called Andy aka FPS Krieger. Now Andy is a major contributor to this channel. I would actually classify him as a sponsor to this channel. Now remember a while back I said to you guys my scuff controller is completely broken down so I don't really have a controller to play at the moment. Now Andy stepped in and he was so generous. He actually contributed a brand new scuff controller to me and that was amazing. At first I was very hesitant but he really insisted and he said my videos make an impact in his life. So I really appreciate that Andy, thank you so much. Now I'm not going to hold back in this gameplay analysis video though. Now the setup that Andy is using in this video is the K-Bar of course with the grip, quick draw and silencer. I would not recommend a silencer on the K-Bar. He's also using Ghost, Cold Blooded, Scavenger and Dead Silence. Now Cold Blooded, you don't really need to use it, you don't really see the top tier players using it alright. So I would probably substitute that for dexterity when using the K-Bar. It makes a huge difference. Now straight away look at that angle, it's not really a good angle to take up. Your opened your body is exposed now this is slightly better he's behind his head glitch this is slightly better but you will see as the gameplay progresses his angles he's taking up is not that great his body's exposed and against a good player the good player will take advantage of that and absolutely kill him in the open when he exposes his body to the enemies like that now let's look at his decision making right here he's been kill confirmed so it works just as the same as tdm of course but you have to pick up the thags but the spawns are basically the same as in TDM. Now he pushes in nicely, but look at this, he just runs straight through. Do I teach you to do that? No, I teach you to pre-aim first and check the area first before you just run in like a crazy buffalo into the open. And I'm telling you guys this to help you out. Never run in the open like that. A good player would love for you to do that so he would exploit your movement. Because if you're just running into the open like that, you're easy pickings, right? So now this is better right here, he's pre-aiming it properly, but look at that slow reload time without dexterity on the K-bar as well. And let's see this now, he goes into phase shift, very nicely done, I'm liking this player right here, and into the enemy, behind the enemy lines, and absolutely destroying them. Now this is the better way, and you can see the results right here, this is what you need to do. Very nicely done Andy. Now he sees a death skull over there, he obviously is paying attention and he takes out that enemy. His teammate was cool as there, the teammate did not know what was happening. So now he sees the opening back here, very nicely predicted, very nicely noticed and he's taking up a prone position in case they push. But look to the right, the random teammate is already out there so you can safely push. You can use your teammates as an indicator of where the enemy is going to be. And very good decision making and awareness as well now. He saw his teammates all crowding up there, he moved away. I always say don't stay around your teammates too long or too much. Bad things will happen, you will die, I guarantee that. So he filled the gap, which was good. He took the initiative, he controlled the situation. Now here he is putting the scorchers down. I would have personally wait until the counter UAV finished. So always keep that in mind, it's better to wait until the enemy's counter UAV is done in the air. So you can see what's going on in the minimap when you call in your scorchers. Now his perception went off, he's just checking the area now. But look at this, he didn't really pre-aim it, did you notice that? He did not pre-aim it, he just went into the open and then ADS'd in onto the enemy. But that was a bit too slow, you can't do that. That's why pre-aiming in Call of Duty is so important and I always emphasize it. Because if you are ADS'd in beforehand and pre-aiming beforehand, you will react and shoot your enemies faster than they can to you if they don't pre-aim themselves and look at that they're getting dropped now now as the game progresses make sure to keep an eye out on his positioning in terms of the angles he's taking up against the enemies sometimes he will use the head glitches nicely but sometimes he will just totally disregard it and just challenge the enemy head on into the open and you will see him often losing those gunfights which is not the good thing to do you need to take up the angles you need to hit them just like that. It works and it works very well. That's why the professional players use it as well. Now look at this scenario here. He saw the death skulls, he's in the open right here. Look at this, right in the open, but he activated phase shift correctly. However, he came out of phase shift in the open as well. So he's not really cor correctly positioning himself on the map in and out of phase shift 
and just in general as well. He's just always in the open for the majority of the time. You have to really make it take advantage of what's around you. Take advantage of the head glitches. Look at what's going on on the map and position yourself properly. It will make you a whole different player. Because positioning in Call of Duty is extremely important. If you look at the gameplay very deeply as well, someone who's playing Call of Duty for a very long time, I can see his confidence is lacking at times. He's playing very hesitant at times. And then sometimes he just goes in and it works out very well for him. So I would say his confidence in the game needs to have a boost. You know, trust in yourself, trust in your decision making and just go for it. Confidence is a very important thing. Example in sports as well, you would notice all the top athletes are very confident people. They're very assertive in what they do. They believe in themselves. So have that confidence and of course destroy the enemy team. So you can notice the angles, most of his deaths, it just came from having bad positioning and not making use of the correct angles. Look at this as well. He's in open. Why not just go to the left on top of that barrier where you can head glitch nicely and take them out. Your body will be covered. The majority of your body will be covered. You will have one of the best head glitches in the game. And he gets taken out. His enemy had a bad position there and they took him out. Now he's pre aiming but he's pre aiming to the ground. You need to pre aim in the middle. Just like that. Very nicely done there. No, this is working out nicely. But of course you have to remember as well the gun you're using, the attachments you're using. He's using a silenced K-bar, so the range would be limited, of course. So he's seen a gap on the minimap, which is very good, very aware of what's going on. And he's pre-aiming now. I like this disciplined approach, and he's pre-aiming. But look, look to your right. Make sure and check the right. Come around from the right when you're approaching this area. Don't just push to the left only. Push around to the right, and then shoot them from the backs. And of course, your flanks will be covered that way as well. And once again, look at that angle. He just went straight in. There was no cover. There was three of them there. What result would you have expected in that scenario? You have to make use of what the game gives you. Go straight in the face shift. Good decision making there. Jumps over this enemy. The enemy sponges a bit. He moves away. He doesn't get tunnel visioned and caught up. And the enemy is coming at him now. And look at this. Boom. In the open, exposed, and the enemy had a shotgun. Now, in that situation as well, if you're in close range with a shotgun, you will die. The shotguns are very strong in this game. So you see, Andy can become a very good player if he just works on his positioning, his angles, using head glitches more, and of course, being a little more confident in yourself and trusting yourself. Also, show some love to Andy in the comment section below, guys. His Twitter and YouTube channel will be in the description below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Take care. Bye.